Hi, it's David Salmon here, the Cycling Grandad. And I'm going to be talking today to you about my epic cycling trip from Lasse to Kathmandu, including the uh, Everest Base Camp. Climbing six Himalayan mountains, including Everest Base Camp. Obviously the first point of call was to arrive at Kathmandu Airport, which, as you can see, is pretty straightforward. Okay. And then into Kathmandu itself and looking for some professional cyclists and guess what, we found some. And this is the main mode of transport around Kathmandu, uh, if you're sensible. Okay, so a lot of rickshaws around, almost on every street, taking you here, there and everywhere for just a few pennies. Uh, on the second day we had a day around Kathmandu. <coughs> And we started off at the Hindu temple, one of the main temples, well, the main temple in Kathmandu and the, the main area. And uh, catching up with our guide who showed us around and gave us a good insight with regard to Hindu culture and the various things that went on at the temple. I'll just leave you with these fo few photos for a second. And then we move on to a typical market street where you name it, you can buy it. So almost anywhere you go in Kathmandu, you can probably just about buy almost anything that you're looking for. And street markets and little shops almost everywhere. Then it was the time to move on in the afternoon to the Buddhist temple in Kathmandu, which is very iconic, as you can see from its main dome. Um, you're not allowed into the main temple itself. But you can travel around on the outside where there's lots of shops and various other temples and uh, take in the splendour of Buddh Buddhist culture and the various um, customs in the area. Then it was back to our hotel. Now, our hotel was a very colonial style hotel, as you can see. So, to start the tour in this palatial type um, hotel was a great start and it gave us a good contrast with regard to other things that were going to be happening to us over the journey. Then we arrived in Lhasa and immediately went to the Polka Palace which dates back to around about the 6th or 7th century and um, is pretty amazing when it comes to the various uh, infrastructure there. As you can see we got some uh, bells there or chimes that can be rung, prayer bells. And then the, the, first, the second day we did a day trip to Sierra Monastery just to acclimatise ourselves because we were already at about three and a half thousand metres so the air was a bit thin we had to make sure we was comfortable there and we spent a good bit of time walking around the temple there and understanding what Buddhist culture was all about and learning about prayer wheels as you can see there and the various symbols um, and uh, pictures that they have to demonstrate the meanings of Buddhist following. And then we came back and we had another view of the Polka Palace, which is pretty amazing. It makes a very big dominant part of uh, Lasso itself. Then the following day we spent some time at the Jolkha temple in Lhasa which is the most sacred shrine in Tibet with thousands of people arriving every day to pay homage uh, with regard to their, their temple and as you can see we're on the roof there and from the roof you can look out right the way across the marketplace and as you can see in the distance there you've got the other temple And from there, we then looked around for local transport, and here's typical transport in Lhasa. And this item will get you here, there and everywhere, and will also cart all your goods that you're looking to sell as well. Then, we then found the deluxe version. And here's the deluxe version of that particular mode of transport. So, just think, how would that get you across the various roads in the UK? Then the team was ready to go, so we took a quick team photograph and here we all are, just at the palace here, ready to head off, all fresh, acclimatised and ready to roll. And then, great news, it was aha, it was onto the open road out of Lhasa 
and as you can see the roads in Tibet are unbelievably well uh, constructed and quite wide uh, making them ideal for cycling and uh, hardly any traffic. This is the end of part one now you can catch up with parts two and three to continue the journey to Everest and on to Kathmandu. So for more cycling adventures the cyclinggranddad.com. Thank you very much.